Okay, so our next um, task is to save this part as the pilot. Um, yeah, item four. So I'm going to make sure all the geometry is current by hitting save. And then either the pull down and save as, or over on file, uh, pull down and save as. And I want to make a careful choice here. Save as, copy, and continue. Are we going to finish out the, um, the screw? Or are we going to save as, copy, and open? In which case, um, let's see, the um, uh, item 3 will still be open, but we'll be in uh, item, item 4. So let's go ahead and save as, copy, and open. Oh. And actually, I should have named it, um, wouldn't matter what I did if I didn't rename it, for, and this is the pilot screw. Okay, so item four of the pilot screw is open. And when we look, then item three is still available over on, uh, and it's, uh, and it's on part. All right, so to finish out the uh, the screw, as a general rule, chamfers and fillets go in at the very end. They're pretty straightforward, easy. I'm not worried about um, you know, the, the amount of geometry. In this case, we only have a couple of things to add anyway. So we have a, a 30 second 0 0.032 chamfer at the end. So by 45 degrees, maybe not. Not seeing an angle there, so well, probably shouldn't have zoomed up that much. <laughs> uh, typically, that would be a chamfer. So, all right, I think we're going to go with uh, with that, even though I don't see the. The call out. All right, so again, picking the edge on the pop up, we have both the fillet and chamfer that we can jump into. And if not, we'll go underneath fillet and be able to find the chamfer. So we have an edge 0.032, angle is 45 degrees. And then the different choices depending on what our geometry selection is for the uh, for the chamfer. And then we have for the fillets. Now that one's called out 031. So um, radius of 031 at the uh, at each of the edges. So I'm going to hold down the control button and pre-select. And the only difference is if I went into the fillet first, I would have to select, but I wouldn't necessarily have to hold down the control button. And so 0 0.031, and we'll accept. So I'm not sure why that went into the fillet expert. Probably would have just done the, uh, the standard would have been fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then window, switch over to the pilot screw. Also, if you hold down alt and tab, and that alt is the windows thing. I keep getting those reversed. Control and tab. And it's going to allow you to, uh, to shift between uh, open documents. All right. So the difference for the pilot screw is it has an undercut. And, you know, realistically that we're not going to, uh, to thread all the way up to the shoulder. And maybe on the, uh, the overall travel, it's not going to get to the bottom out on that shoulder. Uh, but mostly since that thread's going to stop a little short, we would either put a little counterbore relief or a heavy chamfer on this side to give, give it clearance. 
the undercut on this side is going to kind of serve that purpose since this is the tightening side when it comes in contact with the back face uh, those those threads not being able to um, to fully bottom on the uh, the shoulder face uh, would cause it to uh, to bind before it um, had complete clamping all right so eighth of an inch undercut 031 uh, let's see and 0.25 by 5 sixteenths All right, so I'm going to use the revolve again. So front plane, sketch, center line, vertical, infinite length. That sets up all the conditions for my revolve, or all my preferred conditions for the revolve. Um, and then some of these don't necessarily have to have the center line, but since we have a gap in the, uh, the cut, um, the cut revolve, then we're going to need that center line for, for our geometry. All right, so the pilot hole was 0.26. Our pilot on the, uh, the screw, 0.25, and the height. All right, so I over um, defined by staying in the, uh, the dimension. We're going to hit escape to get back into the linear. And it was either 312 or 313. All right, so one solution is to set the diameter. Another solution for the uh, for the undercut, we're going to look for that intersection, that coincidence. Its height is 0.125, and the depth is 0.031. All right, so pretty much right there at the um, uh, the end of the thread engagement. All right, so now instead of doing a positive feature, we're going to extrude cut and remove material. And, oh, and that was a cut extrude. Let's try the revolve cut. <laughs> there we go. And line one, again, is the center line. Since it's the only center line in the sketch, it picks it by default. We have two closed regions, so we don't have to pick any contour region. And line 360 degrees is our parameter is going to give us the undercut. All right, now we can apply the fillet. Uh, we said that if um, we didn't pre-select and just went into the fillet, so whatever the last fillet I did required the fillet expert, I'm just going to go to manual. And under fillet types, uh, you have constant size, which is going to be the majority, variable size, face fillets, and then full round fillets. So each of those performs a different um, function depending on what we're telling it to do. So three, one, and then the inside. So here I don't have to hold down the control button. Oh, and the uh, the little pop-up. So... If the um, selection is going to be more involved, then the pop-up will let you edges, um, so all concave. And so that's not really helping me any. I'm just going to come, come out and accept. Oh, and I did miss that one. All right, so getting back into it, right-click on the fillet, edit the feature, and then we can add one more edge to the selection set. All right, so the other choice by habit or by default, I'm going to um, pick my edges. I could have picked the face. So let's do that as an example. So item four and item three. If I pick the face, then all of the connecting edges. So uh, I'll get the uh, fillet applied to it. So that's both, in both the advantage and the disadvantages. If I pick this face, the top edge and the bottom edge, but then each of the whole edges also would get an 031 fillet in. So it's not always desirable. So try the face fillet when it is um, when it is handy, but realize that you may be getting extra geometry as uh, as you go. So we'll save that, and we can um, yeah we'll go ahead and close. 
and we're ready for the pin. The pins are identical. Right, so both pins will be used. And so two and a half inches by three sixteenths with an O31 on each end. All right, so to help with the, um, the mate, this is where the magic crystal ball of design intent comes in that says, when I bring this into the assembly, it would be handy if I could align the center of this, uh, this cylinder to the center of the um, pilot screw or the screw up. So that being the case, if I draw this on the front plane, then I want to use that in condition that says I have mid plane. So 0.188 and the feature is an extrude boss. The end condition is mid plane and two and a half inches. And accept. And just wanted to check one thing. Well, it's pretty much the center point because the two and nine six uh, nine sixteenths on the stock, providing a, a sixteenth for for cleanup. Yeah, it goes to center. So just the O thirty one on each end. All right. So my fillets. Select, control, select. When it comes up in the pop up, fill it. 0.031. And the 100 would be way too big. And we go ahead and save. 5 pen and initials. Alright, so again, the geometry for the, uh, the parts, not overly complicated. Take it step by step. Uh, try some different um, uh, strategies, some different techniques. Um, don't be afraid to experiment. This is an evolving process that there are many different ways to uh, to do these parts. And as we get further into the um, uh, the more detail, more complicated parts, then um, uh, watch the videos for reference. But be prepared to uh, branch out on your own and uh, see what um, uh, what types of things you can uh, you can find out and what works for you. All right, so the whole purpose of the uh, the assembly and the definition of the bottom up assembly process uh, strategy is that we will have all of our parts prepared. We've made the six pieces. And we're going to start to bring those into the assembly and just a very quick, very straightforward assembly. Nothing, um, nothing real fancy on, on this. So we will probably leave about an inch gap so that we can look at the distance mate. Um, but just like the, uh, the relations that we've seen in the sketches, you're going to have very similar definition for the mate relations or the, uh, mate references. So new, um, I've created an assembly inch on this one, so it was the same process as the part. Uh, when I'm on the uh, the other uh, system next, I will um, will go through the process of setting up uh, an assembly template. If you want to attempt it on your own, go ahead and give it a try, and we'll um, uh, then you can follow up. The um, Begin assembly. All right. So as soon as we open up the assembly file, and I still don't need the cam, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off while I'm looking at it. Uh, open documents. So anything that was listed in window would be accessible in the open documents. So if I had all six of these, um, as a general rule, I close the parts as I'm I'm uh, finished with them and then bringing them back into the assembly or browse form. Maybe I would open up a couple if I was working on it. just kind of depends on um, where I'm at in the design phase as to how many documents I will keep open. But I try to keep the, um, uh, the documents fairly, uh, fairly clean. Um, so no open documents, so we'll need to browse. Coming down to the options, start command when creating new assembly. So begin assembly is going to come up automatically, which 
just saves having to come up to insert component. 95% of the time, and I can't say all the time, you're going to be bringing a part into the assembly to get it started. The automatic browse when you're creating new assembly would go ahead and put you right into browse to pick. So even if there were open documents, it would oh, go pick something. Yes, we want the graphics preview. Uh, no, we're not going to make this virtual. Virtual would, in effect, absorb our component into the assembly and would no longer be in, um, independent. Uh, envelope. Got to go back and look at that one. Envelope is usually how much space the, uh, the assembly takes up. Show rotate context toolbar. That one's handy. It comes with um, uh, a watch out. So we'll leave it on, and then I'm going to browse, and we're just going to bring in jaw one and open. All right, so I don't have to make it look like the um, the drawing that we're working off of, um, and actually jaw one is going to be the interesting one anyway. So all right, let's go ahead with um, with that. All right, so to rotate, we're rotating about Z, rotating about X. If I want to rotate this up, then we're going to click about Z. So I didn't quite make it. Another 90 degrees, another 90 degrees. And then uh, if I try to place it on the origin, it kind of jumps, jumps out. And if I go ahead and just say OK, places it but it doesn't really do what I want it to do which is when I hit the check mark because I rotated it when I hit the check mark it should put origin to origin it's not going to do that because I rotated it all right so I'm just going to click in the work area and place um, place the jaw so notice that it's fixed the origin of the assembly and the origin of the part are separate so to make this and start in on the mates, I'm going to right click on the part and float. <clears throat> so now when I grab the part, notice the origin is staying stationary. So that means I'm not rotating the view. I am or moving the view or I am actually moving the, uh, the part. All right. So things like uh, the select control select will go to the top plane. So a face to the plane goes coincident. Can rotate around a little bit so I can see the back. And then the front plane, so face to plane, coincident. All right. And then now if I grab the part, it moves left to right, not front to back, not up and down. So that leaves Picking my geometry, and oh yeah, this was facing the other way. So we're going to see what that does to our um, our geometry. So every every part has two solutions. We're going to pick the right plane and the face. And if I just go coincident, its mate alignment is in its current orientation. When we expand out, we're going to have all of the mates that we just applied. The coincident. Coincident to the front, coincident to the right, and if I right click, I can flip the mate alignment. Now, because the coincident on this face would be affected, it's, a, it's showing me that that alignment was also reversed to preserve the, um, uh, make everything correct with the mate that I selected. Alright, so I'll move that into position. Uh, we're going to start accumulating a bunch of little blue dots for all of these origins. So I am going to turn the origin off now that I have the first piece in position. All right, so things to notice about the assembly. We have an assembly tab. We can still sketch, but we're not doing anything in the way of features. Layout is another tool that we can uh, utilize in, in the background of the uh, the assembly we can have assembly sketches and we can uh, pick up measurements between our geometries as well as mass properties 
uh, center of mass of the uh, the system once we start to uh, to apply materials. All right, so typically I would say materials are kind of an afterthought before we go into the drawing before we go into those um, those next levels. So let's go ahead with the um, the parts. So all of our assembly tools, the insert components, the mate references, um, component preview is grayed out. Linear components, so all of our patterns, and there's quite a few patterns. Smart fasteners is one that we will get to, but um, pretty much being able to do stack up since we created all the fasteners for this um, assembly, we won't be using any of those. The move component allows me to pan the view. Oh. Nope, fully defined, so it has to be free. <laughs> Sorry, I need to do the do the details. Rotate component, if it was free, would also rotate. Uh, show all the hidden components, so when we get to um, hiding and showing things, we want to uh, show everything. There are assembly features that we can apply just in the um, assembly. Our reference geometries. Motion bill of materials can be inserted into the assembly. It's not as functional as inserting one into the drawing, as we'll see. Exploded views we will get to. I'm pretty much taking the uh, the parts um, and expanding them out so we can see them. Uh, we're still not doing anything with Instant 3D. Speed pack is a a way of working with large assemblies taking a snapshot pictures. I think I might have added that one. And then a large assembly mode says that everything up to a certain number of parts will be loaded into memory and then the rest will be loaded lightweight so they'll have a little feather symbol off to the uh, to the side. All right, so the display if we pan is we're moving the part but we're not really moving the part, we're moving the view. All right, so the pan and then holding down the middle mouse button rotating is not the same as move component, rotate component. All right, so one of the perceptual uh, problems, errors that um, that we make is, am I moving the part within the work area? So let's bring in the next um, next component. So we have a couple ways to bring those in. Uh, begin assembly when we first start, insert component. We'll bring in the right jaw, and let's go ahead and rotate it about Z. It went the wrong way. Well, we're just going to rotate it all the way around. We're putting it into position, getting it close. And so now, if I pan and I see those move together, or I hold down the control button in the middle mouse wheel, pan, the alt rotates about the view. Alt and middle mouse button, and then the the zoom. So all of those are moving the view. Since this part is not defined by its mate references yet, if it moves in relation to the origin, moves in relation to another part, then it's not fully defined, and I am actually moving that part, and the other one is remaining stationary. All right, so our locations. Let's go ahead and use the whole location. And I like whole locations, cylinder to cylinder. All right, so in my hierarchy, we used um, planes and faces, but we could go plane to plane, plane to face, face to face, which is what we're doing here. And then kind of secondary is my less desirable, um, or less uh, in the priorities, is edge to edge and point to point. So edge to point and um, uh, edge to face, point to face are kind of the, the secondary secondary choices. And what we're looking for is to build a maximum amount of stability into this um, assembly model. All right, so I have the, the two cylindrical faces. I'm going to set the mate. It defaults to concentric, which is correct. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. This is able to move and it's able to rotate. So we're starting to see the six degrees of freedom. All right, so our six degrees of freedom are movement along each of the axes. All right, so linear X, linear Y, 
linear z, and then rotation about each of those axes. And to control all six degrees of freedom is to make the part static or stationary. So I have another set of holes that I would like to make sure that they stay in alignment. So concentric. If the measurement went off, if I changed the dimension, and those are my critical hole locations, the error would let me know, the resulting error of making a change would let me know that um, those, those holes weren't in alignment anymore. And then we've used coincident, we've used concentric, and now we're going to use a distance. And distance of one inch is fine. And since I'm in the mate command, the mate selections is in blue is uh, highlighted. I can select the face, rotate over, and select a face, and that will bring the parts one inch apart. If I'd gone coincident, they would be touching, and it wouldn't really illustrate what we're doing with our uh, clamp assembly. All right, so flying this back in. All right, so the machinist clamp or the parallel clamp is that this is going to close. We're going to use this one to tighten, and then as this pushes towards the back, it provides a little bit of lever action to add additional pressure to the uh, to the front. So we're going to bring in the uh, the screws, item three and item four, and put those in position, and start to see what um, what we can do with this assembly. All right, so. Uh, we use the begin assembly, the insert components. We can go insert component, existing part and assembly, which takes us to the, pretty much the same place. We're going to bring in item three and locate. And I'm not really worried about rotating it into position. We'll go ahead and hit the cylinder, hold down the control, and go to concentric on the pop-up. If you don't recognize the icons until you get used to the um, uh, the symbols and the icons hovering over the top of it, will show you the uh, the tool tips. Otherwise, we'll just go into the mate and it threw it way off over there, which is always interesting. And it defaulted to concentric, so we didn't have to make a selection, but it's facing the wrong way, so we do want to reverse the mate alignment. So now it threw it off the other way. And we'll go ahead and accept, and I'm just going to go ahead and accept to close. All right, so as you get more familiar with the uh, the mates, the, the different um, uh, selections, you probably will want to use those pop-up menus because they are significantly faster. All right, so select. Control select, so face to face, I'm expecting to be coincident. And so I have a coincident in the pop up. If I go to the mate command, then we'll default to coincident. The alignment's okay, I don't need to reverse it. And we go ahead and hit accept. All right, so depending on the, uh, the threading, there's no Guarantee that the um, you know, that the alignment uh, will be straight up and down. So whatever we get for rotation is fine. And we're depicting this more in a functional state where this was depicted as um, for for the detail very difficult to detail an isometric assembly. So this was more for uh, visual than it was for function. All right, so I could put in another mate that said that the uh, front plane, so if we expand this out, I could go uh, front plane to the top plane is parallel, um, to the front plane to front plane is parallel since we uh, didn't really utilize the, uh, the mid plane. Or I can expand out and where we have a concentricity, because I'm not concerned with that orientation. It's not going to be the same from part to part on where the screw lead was picked up. You know, even if we um, CNC each of these items, there's no guarantee that the tapped hole would have the same clocking, the same 
index on the start and end of the thread. So uh, position is not a, an issue here. So we'll lock the rotation. Now I say that, and then the um, the only thing that would put it into a uh, slightly uh, better position is if we were to thread mill, but thread milling uh, 5 sixteenths, 18 isn't exactly preferred. So, And then depending on the opening, this is going to be at different location, different, uh, or different rotation as we open and close the jobs anyway. So right now I'm just looking to get the minus signs to go away so that we're in that fully defined. There is, there would be no or little issue with allowing this to rotate. Uh, later on, when we uh, see this again after we've done a, uh, a few more parts, uh, when we go through this uh, this project again, we're going to make it dynamic and see uh, what we can do with its movement. All right, so oh, we have other ways force of habit to go to insert component. Uh, since the um, the part isn't open, let's see. Let's go to recent and we'll open up the pilot screw. And then I'm going to jump back into the assembly. I guess at some point I should save this. So we're going to go ahead and save the machinist clamp. Assemblies as a matter of course are best to save earlier rather than later. And then sometimes it's required that they be saved right away. So machinist clamp, assignment three. Okay, so in our file explorer and the recent documents, so we can identify those. Well, there's a few more of those. Open in SolidWorks. There is the pilot screw and I can drag and drop. So we could also have this uh, folder open in File Explorer, just like we were doing with the drawings, is you have those same options to bring these parts in. All right, so lining, we're going to go concentric. All right, so mate and concentric. It threw it off into space again, so we're going to double check. The orientation is okay. And I'm not even really worried about it being way out there. We're just going to pick the end face. And I know that end face, if I can rotate around to where I can see it, I'm going to be able to pick and they're going to come up coincident. All right, so same thing. We'll give it a little rotation. Oh, let's see, is the concentric still showing up? Okay, so if I click on that concentric, notice that where before I right-click uh, expanded out underneath the part, underneath the mates, identified the concentric. When I'm in the mate, if um, I lock the rotation, it performs the same function. So now, one inch apart, those aren't really going anywhere. And we'll do another quick save. All right, so do I have the, uh, the folder up? There's assignment three. We'll fly that out of the way leaving most of it. I'm going to bring the pin in and the pin will go into the uh, into the slot and we'll go concentric. Oh, and I did that automatically. <laughs> there was also, let's un undo that. There is a concentric and there should have been, yeah, maybe not. I was thinking uh, the lock rotation would uh, would show up there. All right, so even though we're going a little faster by using the, the pop-up, I'm going to have to go in and lock the rotation. And then we need to set, because it can move back and forth, we need to set a position. So on the pilot screw, we have a plane. So the hole's going through the front, or, or perpendicular to the front plane. And we drew the pin on the front plane. So if I select those two fa uh, not faces, uh, those two planes, then I can make those coincident. All right, and that will just allow for um, the the centering of the pin into the uh, pilot screw. All right, so I'll rotate over, 
and then if I hold down the control button and select the pin and drag it into the work area where I identify the pin, hold down the control button, let's see if we can grab it there, I can bring in another instance and then I can also use the SmartMate. The SmartMate says that by grabbing that cylinder and going to another cylinder, I will automatically get a concentric mate and there is the lock rotation that I was looking for a minute ago. So when we go ahead and accept the smart mate, I have that um, I have that concentricity. I've locked the rotation, and I'm just ready for. Let's see, that one's the screw. We're going to go to the front plane, scroll down till we can identify the front plane, and those will be coincident. All right. So one thing of note. The lock rotation is not the same as the lock mate. That does entirely different. And as we get further into the sketching and further into the assemblies, we don't fix and we don't lock. Or if we do, we make uh, a conscious effort to uh, use them and then remove them. So coincident, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, concentric, distance, and angle are all very similar to the sketch relations that we're starting to use and get familiar with. So there's that crossover of where those, um, um, where that terminology meets. Under the advanced mates, then we have the ability to profile center, centering parts on other parts, make symmetric, set widths, paths, couplers, Limit distances, limit angles. So this is where we're going to look at dynamic motion or the the, the dynamics of the uh, the part. Um, cam slots, hinges, gears, rack and pinion, screw mates, universal joints, and let's see multiples. And so we can uh, we can kick that up. All right. So one more save. Next is that uh, we'll go ahead with the exploded view. I would like to, to detail that. So if I create an exploded view, it's going to exist under the configurations. Configurations give me the option of having maybe different positions. Um, what else? Um, uh, adding additional components, taking components away. And um, so the exploded view will uh, live here. Display states where the configurations can control uh, physical properties, then display states control visual properties. So things like colors and textures and uh, those those different uh, different items. All right, so we'll go into an exploded view, and the exploded step is that I want the pin and the screw to come out some distance and so that's my exploded step one and then we'll bring the pin and the pilot screw out some distance and that gives me pretty good visual and then I can bring the pin well that's coming out at kind of a weird angle <laughs> let's see if I grab the orbital at the center there we go. It's on the end of the part, so I should be able to grab it along Z. And the center. That moved it uh, somewhere, so let's repick that. Oh, I had to drag it. There we go. Drag it to position. All right, so I'm not real fond of that location. Probably should have taken it out the other way. So if I highlight um, explode step four, that gives me position, and then I can reverse. And it's a little bit uh, long, so maybe two and a half and tab. And we'll go ahead and scroll down, apply, done. All right, so that gives me an exploded view. All right, so the exploded view lives inside of this assembly. It is not a separate document. 
we're going to be able to access its functionality by coming over the configuration manager and then expanding out underneath the default there's the exploded view there's each of the steps so if I wanted to edit a specific step I could right click and edit I can also delete under the very top we can collapse if we want to see it animated animate the explode it'll come out and show us the locations there's an animation controller that uh, controls we can also save it to an avi or file type and then collapse explode so we're going to utilize that in in our drawing and make sure that gets saved we'll utilize that in our drawing to add a little more detail a little more reference to the part or to the uh, to the uh, drawing details all right, so again, assembly is not overly complicated. Take it step by step. Recommendation is bring one part in at a time. Make it do what you want it to do. Uh, get it to a point where it's defined or it's performing whatever movement uh, you're requiring of it. And then go to the next part. Um, the, the mates and uh, the process of applying, uh, positioning, locating all of these components is a lot of repetition in that coincident, concentricity, uh, parallelism, distances, all those standard mates, we're going to use those a lot. Okay, so our next uh, function will be to put this into the drawing. Prior to going into the drawing, though, let's go ahead and set our materials. So the, uh, the drawing called out for a cold rolled steel, we're gonna find something close. So under the material, if I right click, uh, plain carbon steel would be close. Uh, 1020, I believe, is the hot rolled steel. So since it's not here in my uh, my favorites, we're going to edit material. And close would be 1015, 1010. All right, so cold drum. Uh, okay, so I got it reversed. 1020 and 1018. So 1018 will be the um, the hot rolled. Um, and um, 1020 would be uh, the cold roll. All right, so if that's the case, then 1020, and apply that to the left jaw. Uh, don't worry about the uh, the minuses once we rebuild, because we were exploding and tinkering around. It will typically come back to a defined state. So 1020. All right. Each of the individual items then are going to get the material applied to them. And I'm applying these out of the assembly because I can see them. I don't have to open up each and every one of them. They're either open in memory or they're available. And let's see, pin, expand, right click, 1020. And then if I go look, because those are the same component, item 5, item 5, applying a material to one applies it to every instance of the uh, component in this assembly. And then we're going to save all. Hit Control S on the keyboard to save. And since there was, in effect, a change made to every one of these, then it's going to uh, require that I save all of those back. All right, so we're ready for a drawing. I am not going to make the drawing like this. If you want to attempt it, you can, but um, let's uh, let's go for easy, not more difficult. So we're going to stay with the default. Let's see, we have um, the default drawing. And again, if you are checked, then only show standard formats. A4 and ISO is the small one. Go ahead and stay with the ANSI landscape. If you uncheck the only show standard, that'll put you into the ANSI A size. And we'll have all of this. We want to kind of start to see where the associativity of some of the file properties comes across, but that is a discussion for another time. All right, so since my insert um, or my model view to insert the um, 
the assembly didn't come up, that means I've unchecked it. And for this one, I've been using the view palette. So since the view palette is active, let's go ahead and use it. So I have the machinist clamp as a list. It's showing me all the previews. For the, uh, for the assembly view, I should be able to just drag and drop in the isometric. Uh, we can either control C and control V, or I can just bring in, um, an, another, uh, isometric view. And let's see. Yeah, on the left, let's show in the exploded state. So there are my parts exploded. And want to find a, a decent location for the bill of materials with six pieces, two of them being the same. Uh, they shouldn't be too, uh, too difficult. And then notice that these came in with alignment. So I didn't necessarily want to create alignment. Uh, so under the alignment, uh, so let's see, let's go back through that again. Right click on the view, alignment, and then I'm going to break the alignment so that I can put this in a slightly different location and open up some room for my bill of materials. Okay, close enough. <clears throat> All right, so the view that I want to sign to the bill of materials, and sorry, it's just off screen, is right click in the view at the very bottom, you'll see tables. Under tables, you'll see bill of materials. So I'm going to have to work on getting that uh, uh, that screenshot. All right, so standard bill of materials, and we'll just place it. There's my chart, uh, my my chart, my uh, my table, item numbers, the part number or the part name. There's no description assigned and the quantities. All right, so next will be under the annotation. I want to auto balloon, and I'm going to align these so starting at and incrementing by ones. And I'm kind of thinking everything should just go across the top. And yeah, we can we can adjust that. So go ahead and accept. And it got kind of busy in there. So let's see. You can grab the magnet line. And we're going to shrink the magnet line and just kind of play with um, the settings on the magnet line to get a feel for how they um, how they operate. But Pretty much the item numbers are attached to that line. If I want to detach, all I got to do is grab the uh, the item, pull it away, and it's independent, or drag it back to the magnet line and it will reattach. All right, so find my position. That gives me my first uh, first view. All right, so since the template and the sizing and everything, we're just going to stay with the uh, the machinist clamp. And let's go ahead and save. And since this is the drawing, I don't know if I did that on the assembly. Didn't see it, so apparently I didn't. All right, so I picked up the uh, the drawing name and gives me those views. We can come this way a little bit more. So looking more for aesthetics, not any particular alignment or... Um, location on the drawing view. All right, so decision time. Do you want to have individual drawing sheets or individual drawing files for each part or a drawing package? I still prefer the drawing package, so I'm going to add a sheet. And then let's see which one was open. So the pilot screw is open. We're going to bring it in in the same order. So under view layout, model view, going to browse and bring in the left. I'm going to create multiple views. Since I don't know what views I need necessarily, I'm going to go ahead and just create them all. When I look at this, there isn't really anything in the, uh, the right view that's going to be super helpful. So I'm just going to hit delete. All right. So that tells me on the next, on the, um, the, the next sheet, the next drawing, I can um, uh, do away with that uh, that extra view. 
model view, browse item two. And we'll go ahead and create multiple views, top isometric. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's automatically putting the center lines in. We do have layers. I've turned on my layers over here. We're not ready to get into those yet, but if you want to tinker with um, with the layers, you can turn on that tool by right-clicking in the gray area, coming down to the layer toolbar and finding a, a location for it to stay, and then the layer properties and the layer list will show up. Okay, going to the next sheet. So the um, the difference between this and having separate sheets is that I would insert my my uh, my views, save, close, open up a new document, insert, save, close, open up a new document. The advantage here is that when I go to print, I can print everything in this assembly, including its view, as a as a package or by selecting individual sheets. So I, um, I pretty much uh, prefer the drawing package. Alright, so item three. And we'll go with the multiples. And actually I want that one and that one because I'm going to make an adjustment. Alright, so these two by themselves don't really do anything, but if I rotate, I can highlight the view and in the heads up tell it to rotate 90 degrees. Maybe not 900. And apply. And it's warning me that I'll lose some dimensions and some other, other fun stuff. Anything that I've applied. So I want to do this early in, in the game and make sure that I have my orientation set before I apply um, any dimensions or annotations. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm looking down the uh, the shaft. Item four, the pilot screw. And we'll do the same thing. Um, multiple views, the front, the right, and the isometric. Go ahead and rotate. And yes, that's fine. Rough positioning, nothing really set at this point. And last will be the pen. Oh, and if we go in from the insert, insert drawing view model, browse, slipped into old habits again, so. And not sure what the orientation is, but we'll go with, all right, that'll work. We'll go with the uh, the front and the, the right view again. Okay, so I have the majority of my drawings, majority of my views set up, so we'll go ahead and hit save. Make sure everything rebuilds. And then go ahead and apply a few dimensions. We're not looking for completely detailed drawing at this stage, but if you want to take it there, that's fine. Um, so smart dimensions. And I did not mark, so let's uh, talk about that real quick, is under the annotations we have model items and we can bring in marked for drawing, not marked for drawing. And so anything that I marked for drawing I would consider a critical dimension rather than bringing in absolutely everything, especially since the next one is not marked for drawing. So the logic says that if I want to bring in everything, I can... I can select the not mark for drawing and, and get it right there. Mark for drawing then would be high tolerance, critical, critical dimensions. All right, so let's let's try this. These are simple enough parts that we ought to be able to get um, uh, some of the not for uh, not mark for drawing, and then we'll go ahead and accept. All right, so it came in with most. And let's see, is that a whole call out or did it? No, I found, found that my dimension for the whole thread. It did not give me a whole count, which, um, 
let's see, 0.63 notice we're in two decimal places, which that's fine. We'll we'll worry about units and or the uh, the decimal places later. Um, I do want to show the difference between the whole callout and the um, the standard default is an ANSI. This is what I would expect to see is the through hole, the 5 16 18 uh, UNC 2B, and uh, an instance count. All right, we have a slightly different um, different view where it's picking up on or um, a different shading than um, than the standard where it's picking up on the uh, the default layers. All right, so let's try that again since it worked reasonably well. Model items, the entire model not marked. Oh, and uh, since this one, now let's go ahead and hit Control Z and undo those. This one really should have picked up the uh, the bottom view, so I'm not able to see that um, that blind hole. So I'm going to reverse it and pick the bottom view. It's also warning me I'm going to lose the dimensions and the detail. But that gives me the location, still gives me the front view, which is fine. That's uh, that's what I'm looking for. Model items, entire model, not marked. And so we get a little bit more. All right. So again, I didn't get a lot of information off of uh, off of that one. So more than likely, I would delete, and then we'll go back to a whole callout and whole callout. So that one's a through all. This one has a depth associated to it. Okay, and the, what was the front view that's now the bottom view still has its um, dimension. What it didn't give me was off of the datum from the front. So I'm going to add that one by going into Smart Dimension, picking the nose of the other uh, part, and then um, bringing it over to the, to the whole center line or center mark. All right, so again, we have that slightly different um, uh, shade between the uh, the two. I was going to line those up a little bit better, but I'm not quite cooperating. Okay, my OCD showing. All right, so we'll worry about those later. Yeah, again, another pass on the details. All right, so we'll give it a shot. Um, what ends up happening is the way that you design when we're starting with nothing, um, our imagination, and we're going through this process, you design for what's convenient, what you see, and go through the developmental process. That is not usually the, the best for manufacturing. All right, so go ahead and set that one. All right, so the 0.44 we can use, the 0.69 not so much. All right, and so now you're kind of seeing with more complexity, uh, we're getting a lot of, um, uh, we usually just call it spider web, where we're having to go through and do basic cleanup because um, everything is kind of just haphazardly placed. And then smart dimension. And then we really didn't get, so I don't know if the whole call out will find that or not. We'll see. So I found the 0.31, but it still didn't give me my full uh, cosmetic thread. I don't think I turned that off. It should have given me the 5 16 18 on that one as well. So not real fond of uh, just the dimension there. We need a little bit more. So that being the case, um, Let's just go with the smart dimension on the the outside, and if I have to um, type it in for now, um, eighteen unc dash two b, and then that at least gets it um, notated. 
All right, model items, mark for view. And this one, I think I'm just going to leave. All right, we got, we got most of it. Um, if this uh, works okay, we'll be able to take the control button and drag it out of that view and place it in that view. Actually, it copied it. That wasn't quite, maybe it's shift. Most of the time, it's easier just to delete than to remember all of the hotkeys. So, um, so that dimension, don't really like the leaders. It's given linear, so let's go over. Oh, need that one. Let's say it's still giving us that uh, linear inside, outside, smart dimension. No, can't say that. No, it's picking that off of the, the center line, so, or the center mark. Alright, so a little more, we'll clean it up like the um, the previous, and then so we can uh, we'll finish out. So if I pick the edge, it's not going to include the radius. I need to go from face to face to get the overall. Two and a half inches. Set our diameter. And this one's easy enough that I'm not even going to bother the bother with model items. Okay. So that gives the detail. That takes us through uh, at least the preliminaries of the process where we create the parts, we get gather up the information, we shift through the, uh, the details, uh, try to filter out the noise, take something that's fairly complicated, reduce it down to its component parts, uh, build it out, and we have uh, each of the parts goes into the assembly. The assembly gives us some additional information and the details bring it up to point where it can be manufactured. So again, don't get too hung up on making these, uh, these perfect. Go through the process. Um, at this stage, my expectation is that you'll still have some underdefined sketches, maybe even in the assembly some um, Underdefined components that aren't fully mated, um, and that's that's fine. We're going um, into that process. We're going to evolve in that process and um, add add functionality as we go.